Okay, so I want to do a couple more examples of this idea of the law of iterated expectation. So you may remember that we did this life expectancy example very early on um, in a different context, right? With a little bit of a twist now. So let's suppose that X is the age of a randomly selected person. And let's suppose that that value is uniform on the range 20 years old to 70 years old, okay? And let's let Y equal the years left to live, which we're gonna specify as a conditional, right? So if, for a person of age X, that number is exponential with um, parameter lambda one over 80 minus x, okay? So this is basically telling you the conditional f of y given x. And so by definition, the expected value of y given x is one over lambda, which is 80 minus x, right? So if you're 20 years old, your expected time left is 60, right? So now let's uh, figure out what is the expected value of y over the whole population, right? So we don't know the PDF of y directly, right? We could get it by computing the joint and then integrating to get the marginal and then doing the expected value computation, right? So kind of one avenue would be to say, okay, well, I know that, um, you know, my marginal is basically this, and my lambda depends on x. That's my conditional. I could multiply this by the PDF of x to get the marginal. That gives me the joint. It's, a, it's a, like a whole big thing, right? I don't want to do that. So expected value of y, again, I can use this law of iterated expectations to be super slick about it, right? This is like saying, okay, this here is like a function of x. This is like saying, okay, if I tell you x, the expected value of y given x is just one over the lambda from the exponential, it's 80 minus x, right? And now the expected value of x, again, this is a uniform between 20 and 70. So what's in the middle? Uh, 50, no, 45, no, 50, no, 45. Man, I suck at math. So, yes, 25 on the other side, right? So, <laughs> sorry. So here, then, this number is, again, very direct to compute. I don't even have to do any integration. Right? I just kind of observe that I know this value and I pick it off from this iterated conditional expectation, right? So, again, this is motivating do fewer integrals, right? Uh, make your life easier by using what you know and using it smart in a smart way, okay? So let me do another example, a little bit more like queuing theory, real world example. So let's suppose that N is equal to the number of customers uh, that arrive at some sort of a place like a bank or a service station um, in an interval of length T. Okay, and so this is basically well modeled, like we talked about before, by a Poisson random variable. So this is a discrete random variable. Um, and this is with parameter, let's say, beta t. Okay. So this is basically kind of saying that beta is like the uh, number of arrivals for length one. And if I have length t, this is my number of arrivals. Okay. And then let's suppose that t itself is... Um, you know, the time required to serve each customer or something like that. And let's suppose that is exponential with parameter alpha. So this is actually kind of a mix of a discrete part and a continuous part. Okay, um, and so let's write down kind of what I know, right? So 
kind of what I'm asking is here n is kind of like conditioned on t. And so what do I know? I know that the continuous time PDF of t is exponential. Right? The conditional PMF of n given t is Poisson with this parameter. This is basically, you know, these are my possible values of n. Okay. And so now what I want to know is um, what is the expected value of n and the variance of n? Okay. So I don't actually know the PMF of n totally because it depends on t, right? So again, same deal. I could kind of go through and integrate over the t to get the PMF of n directly, but I'm going to again use this law of iterative expectation to make my life easier, right? So what do I know about the expected value of n given t? So remember that for Poisson, the expected value of uh, x is basically the parameter lambda, and the expected value of um, x squared is basically alpha plus alpha squared, right? This is kind of coming from a table somewhere, okay? So what do I have in my situation with um, here? So in this problem, the expected value of n, given that t is some value, is this number, and the expected value of n squared, given that t is that number, is this value. Okay, so this is just kind of like from the table of Poisson, okay? So what is the overall expected value of n, right? Well, it should be the expected value of the expected value of n given t, okay? So in this case, this is like saying, well, I know the inner part, that's this part. This is just the expected value of this, which is beta times the expected value of t, right? Which, if I go back and think about it, you know, beta, I guess I told you that this had parameter alpha. So this is like beta over alpha, right? What is the uh, expected value of n squared? Well, it's the expected value of the expected value of n squared given t, which I know is now the expected value of um, beta t plus beta t squared. And what I want to do is I actually want to compute the... Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. What I want to do is actually compute the variance, right? So the variance of n is the expected value of n squared minus the expected value of n squared. Both these things we know now, right? So that's equal to um, basically beta times the expected value of t plus beta squared times the expected value of t squared minus beta squared times the expected value of t squared, right? So what I get is basically beta expected value of t plus beta squared times the variance of t. And if I wanted to actually, you know, write this out, this would be beta over alpha plus beta squared over alpha squared, okay? So what is the idea here? The idea here is I'm trying to compute the variance of n. Now, if t was not random, right? So basically, if it took the same amount of time to service each person, then the variance of t would be zero, right? Um, so if t was, um, you know, constant, not variable at all, then the variance of t would equal zero. But if t is not constant, that means it has some variance, and that means that the variance of n kind of goes up with the variance of t. So otherwise, you know, it doesn't change the mean, but um, otherwise the variance of n increases with the variance of t, right? It has some baseline variance, and then it increases as the variance of t gets bigger, right? So the variability in t can only make the variability in n worse, okay? 
all right. Sounds like a good place to stop.